snow comes early to the farms of Vermont. Life slows down in pace. But the long winters have made these New Englanders neighborly and interdependent. Here in the village of Pittsford live lumbermen and some marble workers, and many farmers who live close to the rocky soil they own. Each works hard for his own livelihood, but in summer or winter, these people help each other. No matter how deep the snow, Mr. and Mrs. Croft, for instance, can be seen every school day setting out from their home for their little schoolhouse, one of several in Pittsburgh. Both have a deep interest in their townsfolk, whether young or old. Mr. Croft is the janitor. His wife is the teacher in the small school. As well as they can, they care for this school as they do their own home. Today, Mrs. Croft is going to order a new desk that she has long hoped for. The superintendent of schools has finally approved the purchase with funds the townspeople voted for school improvements. The townspeople prepare their children well for their long, cold walk to school to guard them against wet feet and running noses. The Crofts share this concern for the children's health and make themselves responsible for their well-being during the day. Children from 6 to 12 years old live in a small community on the edge of Pittsburgh, which is one of several school districts. The teacher divides her time equally among the different grades and keeps each one busy all through the morning. clock is lunchtime, and the students eagerly collect their lunches which their mothers packed that morning.
As Mrs. Croft looks on, she thinks again how much better it would be for these children if they could have a hot lunch at noontime instead of cold sandwiches. There would be healthier pupils and it would result in better classwork. A good teacher is not only concerned with feeding children's minds, what feeds their growing bodies also concerns her deeply. As they close the school at the end of the day, they think of the kitchen they will need, where to place it, and how to get a stove. The Crofts know their pupils' parents well, and the parents like the Crofts, and help them when they can. You might not call this a parent-teacher meeting, but that's really what it is. Mrs. Davis understands the need for hot lunches, too. She has a big stake in the little school and is ever grateful to the Crofts. So Mrs. Davis starts to arouse interest in this hot lunch program. Would the parents attend a meeting? Perhaps some money could be raised. If not enough, could the mothers take turns cooking at the school or donate food? Could the fathers install a stove? Interest is aroused and a meeting agreed upon. When the parents meet in the familiar schoolroom, Mrs. Croft speaks as their friend and public servant asking their help. The parents could raise some money if Mr. Williams, the superintendent, could grant some more from school funds. Mr. Williams would like to help, but the school funds just can't be stretched without an increase in taxes. Well, if Mrs. Croft is willing to do without her new desk, perhaps they can persuade the town to vote more money. Mrs. Davis knows well that everyone, including her husband, must campaign everywhere to win support. Their school district is just a small part of Pittsford, and the annual meeting is coming soon. It's a big, important event. Everyone will be there to vote. So the parents ask everyone to support their project. When the notice for the annual meeting is put up at the post office, the townspeople start taking sides. The hot lunch program will be discussed. It's on the agenda. On town meeting day, the church bells bring the people out. They look forward to this get-together when they elect new officers and discuss common problems of the town. Finances, health, safety, the library, the schools, and any other questions which anyone wishes to bring before his townspeople. The marble company where Mr. Davis works has closed today so its men can attend the meeting. All the stores are shut.
Some, just turned 21, are coming for the first time. Others have been coming for many years. They gather at their town hall, the center of every town's civic life. They meet old friends, gossip a bit, and exchange news, and make plans for another busy year ahead. Mr. Lewis has been re-elected as moderator for the meeting. The parents' club sits together, anxiously watching the order of business as it progresses. Through the reading of the treasurer's report, the selectman's report, the school superintendent's annual report, and other summaries of last year's activities. Finally, the time comes to discuss the granting of funds for the hot lunch program. The whole is as good as its parts, they say, and the meeting is as good as the members make it. Thus, everyone welcomes a new problem put before the people. Here's a new proposal to consider so all ears are alert. And as always, new ideas meet with varied reactions. Since this proposal involves the appropriation of new funds, the reasons for it must be stoutly presented and interest runs high. But some do not like new ideas, and the opposition spokesman argues that many things must be considered when the taxpayer's money is an issue. Hot lunches are nice, but children in his day did well without them. This plan seems to favor just a few, he says, so they must have good reasons. Once again, Mrs. Davis argues her point. Then a man new to the town helps her by telling how this problem was met in his former hometown by a project very similar to Mrs. Davis's plan. Dr. Benton, the much respected town physician, asks to speak. He is concerned about preventing of illness among school children and urges this expenditure of public money as a means of protecting health. He argues that public health is the concern of all. Yet the opposition still believe this is a selfish proposal. And so a vote is called for from the floor. Now, Arguments for and against are all in. Each person must make up his own mind, yes or no. rests with the majority of the people of Pittsford. The ballots, of course, are secret, but the counting is done in the open by tellers elected by the people.
the vote is yes. Hot lunches now for the children. A gift of good health from the people of a town that can solve its own problems.